Hey, Internet and all you people listening to us through it. <laughs> this is um, Kent and Chris for Kenter at Your Own Risk, number 25. Uh, tonight, we will be doing kind of like a spur of the moment, off the cuff, pick of horror movies that we consider hidden gems. Ones that maybe are critically claimed, but necessarily weren't popular or ones that we think uh, should be acclaimed and just never got the exposure that they needed. But outside of that, uh, I think this is pretty exciting because this is the first time in a while that we've done a couple back to back. I know you guys, you know, all four of you listening to us, it's probably just going to be boom, 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 but it's only been like two weeks. So Kent, I, I hear your, your computers are having a tough time, but outside of that, I hope you're doing okay. Yeah, um, yeah, it's just been a lot, uh, a lot of mishap. I, I have straight up gone, and, and I feel all of our listeners are somewhat computer, like have used a computer. So, you know, you get to the very first screen and then you press, you, you left click or you press your space bar and then you put in your pin code or password, right? Yes. That, yeah, I can't get past, I can't even get to input my pin. That sucks. <laughs> like that's where I am at. I, no matter what I had, everything it just it, it the computer's just straight up flipping me off at this point. So I am begrudgingly going to bring it to a computer specialist after uh, I, I can't even begin to tell you how many hours and hours and hours I've wasted on this. And of course, it happens. You know, late September, just as I'm gearing up for October, so the timing could not be any better i'm i'm picturing your computer giving you a degeneration x crotch chop you know i gave one of those as soon as i got my high school diploma and i regret nothing <laughs> it's, it's coming <laughs> karma's a bitch <laughs> you know you're like the second person that's kind of told me something similar <laughs> <laughs> all right so um how about i start because my list is going to be much more manageable you think I, I'm pretty sure, yes. God, I hope you mention at least some of them that I have. All right, so what Kent did and what I, I stole from him is uh, for our lists, uh, we only went with stuff that's either readily available or free to stream. At least I did. Um, so I'm going to go through a couple honorable mentions right now um, that, are unfortunately, you have to buy if you, if you want to watch them. So keep that in mind. But um, I think I've mentioned most of these somewhere before, which is why I'm not going to go too deep into them. But uh, they've got Day Watch and Night Watch. Or I, I'm not even going to try the Russian. But um, they're, they're Russian sci-fi horror action dramas um, that deal with, like, supernatural vampires, which is... All sorts of weird shit. Like the the first one is the the highest grossing Russian movie that has ever been made. And uh, how, like, how many other Russian movies do? You, are you familiar with any other Russian movies off the top of your head? I've watched a couple. I mean, we un, unlike like China, we don't get a, a steady stream of them just like filtering in. And same thing with like Korea now. Korea's Korean stuff's getting really big because of Netflix. But um, like I watched I watched like a Conan analog called wolfhound there was um there was this crazy superhero one i forgot what it was called but like the 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 team it was like a russian avengers basically but like i remember like one of the dudes had like a lion head and it was there was like a i think there was like a big guy with like a gatling gun it, it was just it was pretty good but it was it was crazy um so i haven't seen a ton but you know, like, the stuff I've seen has been stuff that I've enjoyed. Okay. Um, so those are definitely worthwhile. I was able to find them both together on a, a Blu-ray. The, it's, it's like the bare minimum, you know, it's like the movies and just, like, options. But uh, I enjoyed it enough to, to not regret that purchase at all. Same thing with my next one, which is Brotherhood of the Wolf. Or Le Pac de Lupe. That's, a, that's another one that's kind of like not necessarily straight horror, horror adjacent, but it's um, 
like a French historical horror fantasy martial arts movie. Like I don't I don't know. I mean, if, wow, if, that, that's a if, lot going on. Yeah, if that stuff right there doesn't tickle your fancy, then I mean, I don't know. Um, but it, it takes it's a it's a built around like a oh shit you know what I'm gonna have to okay I'm, I I realized I had to adjust one of my picks for my main thing but um it's it's based on a true story and then they um you know fic, fictionalized it but uh basically in um France in the 1700s there was a creature going around killing you know like I think it killed like something like 200 and some odd people uh, you know to the point where like the citizenry in the in the countryside was afraid you know to like even go outside kind of stuff so they you know turned it into a movie um, it's fucking awesome it's one of my it's one of the ones where it's I watch it like every year in order to uh to just, you know, keep up on it. Um but again that's another one that's only available if you buy the DVD. Uh but definitely worth it. Uh next one, Dog Soldiers. Great werewolf flick. Um but again, nowhere is it streaming. Um I don't know. Did you ever see Season of the Witch with Nicolas Cage? No, and I actually just talked about that movie ever so briefly earlier today because I came across the 72 season of the Witch while gandering. So, no. It's I think it's actually r- really well done. You know, like the the script like okay. The special effects might not be the greatest, but the script was really well written and like he wasn't fucking going out of his way to be, you know, like crazy Nicolas Cage like you get sometimes. He was actually being like actor Nicolas Cage. And he was in it with like Ron Perlman was in it. I always enjoy him too. So, uh, I think it's, I think it's underrated, especially because it came out right around the same time as Black Death did. And I think that got a lot of like the, uh, it was, it was like similar kind of idea with being, you know, more witchy and demony than, you know, uh, realistic, I guess. Um, but I think that one with Sean Bean ended up getting a, like a lot of more marketing. So. It, it did. It definitely did. Cause yeah. I used to see that like everywhere I would see what, what was a black death, right? Yeah. Yeah. I remember seeing that like free to stream. It, it was just popped up a lot, way more than season of the witch. And I mean, God damn it. I love me some Perlman and Nick cage. So, Okay, so, um, sorry, I'm, like, uh, and my last one was another French movie. It was a, um, like a serial killer procedural, um, called The Crimson Rivers. Uh, the, Jean Reno was the, the main character, and, um, Vincent Cassell, uh, have you have you seen um did you see Underwater? No. Uh what about, you saw you watch Westworld, right? West Westworld the, t- the wait, HBO show? one? Yeah. No, I, I never got around to it despite having Ed Harris. What about okay, um Oceans twelve? Yes. Okay, so he was the other main character was the, the French thief who went up against them. Oh, okay. Okay. So it, it's the two of them, and it they're like on two separate investigations that they end up finding out is, is one. But it it was a pretty good, like, serial killer movie in the first place, but it all there were like a lot of scenes that took place up in the Alps. So, like, like there's this one avalanche scene. It's probably the best avalanche I've ever seen in a fucking movie. Yeah, like... I don't know how high the bar is there, <laughs> but I was going to ask yeah. you, like, how many avalanches have you seen? Oh, I'm, I'm thinking there's probably been at least a couple in James Bond, you know, like a uh, triple X. Um, I'm sure there's been more, you know? Uh, yeah, I'm sure there has. I'm just, 
really cliffhanger, struggling. Cliffhanger probably had some. Oh, cliffhanger. Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but those are all my honorable mentions, ones that you have to purchase. So, right. you know, I don't blame anybody for not going out and just buying a DVD on my say-so. Well, I do, but... Oh, uh, you know what? Vincent Cassell was in Black Swan. Oh, yeah, yeah. Love I don't Black Swan. I don't know why that wasn't my first fucking thing. He's married to Monica Bellucci in real life. Really? They were in that one together where she, um... I forgot, dam- not damaged... She she gets raped by a bunch of like Irreversible? very yes yeah he was he was I don't remember if he was her boyfriend or her boyfriend's brother but I mean how, how how great is he you just had to say rape and I was on top of that shit that says a lot about I don't me. know if it's grape <laughs> <laughs> like I I could either yeah. go with that or I spit on your grave and have like a fifty fifty chance here right yeah okay so that's those are my honorable mentions so we'll start the nine portion of my nine deuce. And a lot of these are ones I've talked about before, but um, so I won't go too de- in deep into them. But in no particular order, um, I'll hit We Are Still Here, which you can watch on Prime Video. And also, I want to say Tubi TV. Probably. Uh, this is one that you threw my way, and I actually really enjoyed it. Uh, it had, like, a great... V- um, atmosphere you know it felt very 70s well you know being filmed what relatively recently within the past 10 years yeah Yeah. uh a lot of good uh performances i mean i I know larry pheasant pheasanton was in it and he's one of your (gasps) one of your larry (laughs) and barbara crampton who were both in jacob's wife yeah uh and i i like the story i like the special effects um, I like the ending. So, the ending really like. All right, because let's face it, if you think about horror, a good mm-hmm. tw- maybe I don't know if I'm being generous. Maybe only like twenty percent of horror ends actually satisfying. Most horror sucks at the end. Like it does not satisfy at the end. That movie did. Yeah, one of the the cliches, and probably because a lot of them, you know, for both of us, just based on our age of stuff we watched was in the 80s I hated like when you would see something and like they would you know kill the bad guy or whatever what have you and all of a sudden like right before the credits or right after the credits the bad guy would jump out and like you know then like what the what the what was the fucking point right you know right. either either let him win in the movie or you know let it end you know come on there's gotta be a sequel yeah, but you could set that up before the credits, you know, before, without doing just, like, a single-scene jump scare right at the end kind of shit. Uh, I know, I agree. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I really like that, and I, that was one of the ones that I was definitely glad that you had me watch. Going on from there into another one that you had me watch, this one this one really bothered me. Uh, like, it still bothers me when I think about it, but Honeymoon. Which you can oh, yeah. you can see on uh, Pluto TV. Oh shit! I forgot to even look through Pluto TV. That's okay. That but, that's really okay. <laughs> but yeah, that one that one really bothered me. Like, it it's not like it's super scary or super gross. It's 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 creepy, I guess. And there are de- there's definitely a little bit of body horror in there. But, and Rose Leslie is fan fucking fantastic in that. And the way it ends, though, that fucking ending, that it hits you like it hits it hits me at least like Seven did. Yeah. It's very nihilistic. It's no happy ending in that one, but uh, I would rec- definitely recommend it for a watch. Cause you know it, it builds up in a unique way. I I think it doesn't necessarily follow the exact same formula that you may be used to. No, it was a very um it was very original too. I'll give it that. Like it might have like a couple like there are a lot of movies where you can like just look at okay, here's a part from this other movie and here's a part from this other movie and they, they might have changed the story or the plot or had better script writers, but 
you can see how like they assembled it. Like this was a very individual, very unique. Yeah, it, it was just a really. I was surprised. I I watched it on a whim way back when it was on Netflix. So, I mean, probably that was four or five years ago, <laughs> and it just. I don't know, really pleasantly surprised me. Um, all right. So to piggyback off of nihilism as a theme, my next one is going to be one that really fucked me up as a kid, but it was called uh, Miracle Mile. I think I've talked to you about this before. You have. But um, it's on, again, it's another one that's on Pluto TV. Uh, and it, it was just, it was really one of the first examples of like a movie where everybody dies nobody really succeeds there's you know that that's the point of the movie but you know when i watched it and i i looked at it it came out in 1988 so i would have been eight or nine when i saw you know like that is not the kind of um message that you expect to see in a movie starring you know goose from top gun when you're that age and it was like um kind of like a wake-up call (laughs) But uh, fair enough. <laughs> but I it was I think it was pretty realistic too in the depiction of like the kind of panic that would happen if people found out that like a nuclear strike was going to actually happen. And it, yeah, it, it wasn't like you know like uh, Indiana Jones four where he's able to survive a blast in a uh, refrigerator, or Army of the Dead where the bomb goes off and like a mile away the fucking helicopter goes down and she's completely fine at the end of it. I still haven't seen in D4. Uh, you're not missing much. Nope. I, I'm sure I'm not. I, I eventually will do all four movies and of course that's what I got ended on so I'm going to walk away just completely pissed off but you know. Well, I mean they're making five now. Maybe. Are they? If, if he stops breaking his hip or whatever. Oh, yeah, they're, they're filming it and he, he broke his his ankle or his foot or something while they were yeah, I'm like maybe because he's 80 did did you see the big horror news this week just uh, maybe. what they're re- remaking Lost Boys oh I, I've seen people talking about it but I haven't seen anything official yeah they announced two of the leads and <sighs> I, like, it's just a movie that I they got to be so original when they redo it to make it their own because you can't remake you can't remake it in an 80s I, style i would say I mean, it i was it was kind of funny cuz i was watching a video on that maybe this week or last week and the guy was like you know he's like well he's younger than us so he didn't see it when it first came out he watched it now but he's like it's definitely such a slice of the 80s that that's almost more of its identity than you know like being a horror movie or a vampire movie Oh, I would yeah, argue it's one of the yeah. five or ten most eighty movies ever made. Yeah, like yeah, that shirtless saxophone. <laughs> well, okay, that's exactly what I was going to bring up. Like, are they really going to try to have a shirtless saxophone guy? Like, I'm all for it, but is it going to work this time? I, I don't know. I, you know, and personally, I think that kind of theme and that idea doesn't necessarily need to be rebooted. They could just take that the whole idea and just you know you don't need to it doesn't need to be the same family the characters don't need to be the same you don't need to have a vampire named Michael just the idea of like young vampires wandering aimlessly with you know and family kind of shit you know the lost boys you know you you can make it its own story and that's why I'm saying it needs to be original do not follow the original script and have a good script that I, I'm I'm in for if it's you know what we're gonna enough. get you know where we're gonna get you know we're gonna, wait it's not gonna it's gonna be the I, I'm sorry to say but it's gonna be the fucking woke version of <laughs> uh you just made me taste my own tears yep I'm sorry I'm sorry okay um so moving on from there which way am I gonna go uh all right so I will go to have you ever seen a movie called Citadel? No, but I saw saw it like listed like two or three times when I was looking through stuff. Okay, it's um, I think it's Scottish. If it's if it's not Scottish, it's British, but it's like set in Scotland. Um, it was a really interesting premise. Like, 
this this young guy and his wife have a have a baby and she gets murdered uh I'm trying to remember like I don't remember exactly what the situation was like if he was there and he saw it but um she basically gets beaten to death and so he's stuck raising the baby by himself he's living in like a super decrepit area you know like barely this side of like shanty town um kind of stuff so like to to get the milk for the baby it's got to take like a fucking 40 minute bus ride just to get to the store kind of shit um so he starts being like he's not sure if he's being haunted or if these things are real but he starts seeing like these people or creatures watching him and eventually the baby gets kidnapped and he has to get it back uh james cosmo's in it i'm pretty sure you know who he is I have him up actually as we speak. So yeah, so um, it was pretty good. It was is another one where it was pretty original, and um, I I enjoyed it. I remember seeing like a couple trailers for it, but again, I don't think it had a lot of marketing, and it kind of just disappeared after it came out. Um, so yeah, I recommend watching it if you guys get a chance. I would also just throw out here with citadel since as we're doing this i'm like look and see where you can get it all right here's the abundance of places to watch citadel that yeah that one was on a ton so <laughs> amc plus roku channel hoopla voodoo tubi tv uh something i do not recognize and flicks fling <laughs> i don't know what the hell this icon is it's like a blue with a white camera but like it has legs like a dog i am so confused what the hell that is i'm clicking on it but all right so moving on uh, guide guide dog okay i've never heard, I've never of, heard of it <laughs> okay good good now uh so now i'm gonna have to go back to a couple of my um 80s 80s prime but um warlock i fucking love I've still never seen it. It is on. Uh, it's on Prime Video. Yes, it is. I think it's on my list somewhere in the pages. And again, it, you know, it was one of the one. It might have been early nineties. I don't fucking remember. But I was young enough to watch it that it still was, you know, re- a little scary, but old enough that it wasn't like pull the covers over your head so you don't have to worry about like the face hugger getting you while you're sleeping kind of thing. Um. That's usually my number two fear at night. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, I don't know what my number one is, but that's definitely maybe maybe swallowing a spider. I don't, anyways. Uh, <laughs> Russell's mom crawling into bed is my number one. <laughs> oh, could you imagine if they used her for, for that scene in It? <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> God damn it. Sorry, Russ. Uh, anyways, um, it... it like the the thing that stuck out for for Warlock for me was it was a pretty well written script, you know. Like the characters weren't necessarily doing stupid shit. Like that's one of the things I hate in horror movie where like the script is written just to facilitate being a horror thing instead of like actually looking at the characterization for characters. So I know you, you know. You mean Hellraiser Part Five through Nine? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, it was one of the first things I, I know I'd seen a couple things with Julian Sands for, but it was also the first thing I remember seeing Richard Grant or Richard E. Grant in. So um, pretty good cast, really good script. Uh, I think it like the special effects don't hold up super well, but overall I recommend it as a watch. Uh, and oh, then, Richard E. Grant. Yep. He was... He was in a show that was good, and then it sucked ass. Uh, Dispatches from Elsewhere came out, like, last year, I want to say. I it had... Um, you ever watch uh, How I Met Your Mother? Uh, I've seen a couple episodes, but not, you know, like, uh, I didn't watch uh, the whole thing. The Jason Siegel, I think his yeah. name is? Out. Yeah. Okay, yeah, he he's in it as his... Um, uh, Forrest Gump's mom, uh, Sally Field, mm-hmm. and uh, Andre 3000, and Richard E. Grant. And it's a great cast, cool story. And then about like the second to last episode, 
it kind of goes a little bit down, and then the last episode, it just fails on every freaking level. But still a good story overall. Just you know, the ending sucks. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, all right. Uh, another one that I've talked up ad nauseum uh, is Nightbreed by Clive Barker that you can watch on Pluto TV. Um, it's probably one of my favorite horror movies that I just have ever seen. You know, there's so much to like. It's a monster movie. It's got a serial killer story. It's got a love story. Some great special effects for the time. David Cronenberg is in it as an actor. Uh, so is Doug Bradley. It's just, it's a really cool idea of, one of the first things I remember that really asked the idea of like, what if monsters were like, not the bad guys and man was more monstrous than, than monsters are kind of a kind of pre- premise. Wow, dude, this is streaming on practically everything that has ads, including Peacock, AMC Plus, Voodoo, Tubi TV, uh, e- even Shutter and IMDb TV. Like, it's pretty much everything that involves f- like free with advertisements. Yeah. So, lots of options, people. Yeah, that means you should watch it, Kent. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, my next one, which would I believe be number eight, is going to be The Ritual on Netflix. Uh, I think I think we've talked about it once or twice, but I think it's probably the best monster movie I've seen in maybe the last, maybe even I would maybe I would even go ten years, but definitely the last five. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not I can't think of anything off the top of my head that's better. And I mean, it, it was on my list, so I'm glad that. It, it's just like that cre. It, it's a pretty decent movie, but like that creature is so fucking creepy. Like it, they just did a fucking perfect job of like making. I don't want to spoil it if you haven't seen it, but like when you see it, come back and talk to me, and you know, like I'll go over. Like what I call it. I know, I know, we brought it up, but I don't want to spoil it here. The the mythology behind it's cool, and like even the whole build up. Like, in all right, so the first time I watched it, I was just kind of meh about the beginning, and then it kind of sucked me in. But the second time watching it, the beginning is much better because you know you have better understanding mm-hmm. of what's going on. And I don't know, it's almost a movie that I definitely appreciated more the second time through. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, and one of the coolest things when you watch it the second time, like there's a couple scenes in it where like the the things in the background and it moves, you know, like the the shot will linger and then you'll see it move and you're like, oh shit. But like when you're watching it again, there are a bunch of scenes where it's there and it's just not moving. And like you can pick up on it, you know, when you, when you know what you're looking for the second time through, instead of focusing on the characters having a conversation. Yeah. It's definitely a movie that. I don't want to say it requires a second playthrough, but you'll appreciate... It's not a movie that's going to bore you your second playthrough. No. Yeah. Um, so my number nine is one that I'm just adding to this list because I forgot about it up until I was looking at IMDb like right before we started. And that's um, The Ghost in the Darkness. I think that's... Like, Ooh. that's a fucking class. Like, I really enjoy the story. Again, it's another one like... Um, the uh, Brotherhood of the Wolf that I talked about earlier, where it's it's a true story that they fictionalized, but it's it's unique because it's basically like the African version of Jaws. That seems fair. Yeah, and uh, like I enjoyed Val Kilmer. I enjoyed Michael Douglas in it. Um, I forgot what the guy's name is who plays the uh, the foreman. But he was really good too. Uh, yeah. John Kenny, I guess. Kenny, Kenny. A lot of good performances, quite frankly. But both both the two leads just ate it up. Yeah. Um, and they did, the lines were pretty cool too. Like we we tend to forget because we 
don't have to deal with it very often, but like what animal attacks like really can, can do to do to a body. Yeah. And like, there's a couple scenes where like those lions are fucking people up or you get to see, you know, yeah, a big cat will fucking absolutely own the shit out of you. Now I just need to see a movie where a giraffe destroys a person. I, yeah, I, okay. No, well, because yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm just saying giraffes, like I, I was listening to an interview about a month ago from a zoo, a dude who works at a zoo. I don't want to call him a zookeeper, but I can't think of a better term. And like, they asked him like, if, if it was giraffe was surrounded by 25 dudes all trying to take it down, who would win? And he's like, oh, the giraffe would easily kill all of them. I'm like, okay. And I'm listening. And the more he talked, the more he built up how badass a giraffe is because of the strength of their legs. And now I want to see it in yeah. film. <laughs> I'm trying to... Well, we've had some beavers, so... Uh... <sighs> Did you ever see that? No. <laughs> I mean, me neither. Definitely. But you can read my review at ninedeuce.com. All right, so um, so there's my nine, and then for my deuce, these are two I really highly recommend. If you've never seen, you need to go and watch them. Um, so my first one for these two is going to be I saw the devil. Uh, and if nowhere else, it's available on on Pluto TV. Every once in a while, it goes in and out of the other streaming services. Like I watched it a couple months ago on Prime. But it's it's not available anymore there. Um, but it's a Korean movie, uh, and it the premise is uh, there's a serial killer, and he kills a woman right at the beginning. Um, I think it's implied that he rapes her too, but uh, her father is a retired police ex police chief, and her her fiance uh, and also the, the father of her unborn baby is basically the, he works for the equivalent, I think of the Korean CIA. Um, so the father talks to the police and gets a list of a couple people that they think it possibly could be. He gives it to the fiance and the fiance goes and hunts him down, finds out who it is. And then he basically kidnaps the fucking serial killer tortures him, plants a tracking bug inside of him, and then lets him go. And then the rest of the movie is him going, giving the guy a little bit of a break, going in, beating the shit out of him again, like, breaking something else on him, knocking him unconscious, and then letting him go. And then, continuously over and over, he's like, I want you to experience the, uh, you know, the pain that I have to feel now. Like So, like, the first time he breaks the guy's wrist, the second time he slashes his Achilles tendon... Like the third time he kills a couple of his friends. Uh, and then eventually the serial killer figures out what's going on and gets rid of the bug. And then he goes after the uh, woman's family. It's, dude, it's fucking good. And like, it's one of the few movies that like really shows the repercussions of violence on like nominally the good people too. Um, the, the action is intense. The fucking kills are brutal like there's a scene where the guy beats a a dude's head in with a pipe and like no cutaway at all it's just fucking str- i was like how the hell did they fucking do that um well, yeah it's korean right yes i i mean just to put this in perspective imdb is usually pretty harsh when it comes to films of this ilk mm-hmm. and this has a 7.8 out of 10 rating yeah um, the guy, the serial killer was the, uh, the main guy for, for, he's pretty, uh, famous, I guess, but he was like, did you see the original version of old boy? Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's that guy. He's the, he's the, he plays the serial killer in this one. I, you know, I actually liked both versions of old boy, but I, I still prefer the original, but the other one was okay. Yeah. I, I didn't think it was anywhere near as bad as people shit on it. Yeah. Exa- yeah, a lot of people shit on it, and eh, I mean, what was it, Brolin and Samuel, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was what it was. We we've seen so many worse American remakes of films, so definitely. 
All right, and then my my number one, if you haven't seen it, you need to go see it. And I think this is one that might be on the borderline, but like, as far as I know, everybody who's seen it says this is a good movie. But I think there are a lot of people who haven't seen it. So my number one is going to be Frailty. Uh, by Bill Paxton, starring Bill Paxton, and Matthew McConaughey, Powers Booth. I, I don't want to fucking spoil it if you haven't seen it. Basically, the premise is, um, takes place at two different time periods, and a, a father, on his way home, uh, has, he's a widower. He's got two young boys. Thinks he gets a message from God showing him a couple items that he needs to use to go around and kill demons. And so he begins this campaign of killing the demons that God shows to him and taking his sons along and forcing them to participate with him. And it, I don't know, it's, it's a, I just, it's a fucking great movie. And it really shows that like Bill Paxton was a fucking, we lost a treasure when he died at, at the age that he died at. Abso freaking the dude just had talent, and I, I mean I can't add much to it without giving away much, but the name Otis, well, it always means something different. For after I saw that movie, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's just um, it's it's really it's like it's a whole, again it's another one that combines a bunch bunch of shit. It's a coming of, of age story, a family drama, um. A revenge tale. It's you know what's a brutal scene is just. I don't feel this is spoiler territory. Just the digging scene was kind of brutal to watch. Oh yeah. And then um, the twist at the end is an example, I think, of a twist done well. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) And when you, it's another. It's one of those ones where you can like, you can look back and be like, okay, they gave me all of the information. And I just didn't have it. You know, I didn't put it together because I was too wrapped up in the story at the time. But I've never heard anybody say that, oh, yeah, no, I, I completely knew what was going on before I watched it. It was from a time when they did enough to distract you where you weren't always meant to pick up on the f- final twist. It was it's right before, or I think it was right before fucking M. Night really became like... Twist King, and like we just kind of lost momentum when it came to twists. Because if you think about Usual Suspects, everything was kind of there, not really, but kind of. But the thing was, you got so encaptured into the freaking story, and, and there's others like that, and we've kind of lost that art at times. Yeah, I mean, I remember. Um, okay, Usual Suspects was '95. Um, another one that I remember, kind of feeling like that. Uh, in regards to the twist, at least, was um, L.A. Confidential. Okay. That was 97. Suicide Kings is one for me. Yeah. That was, yeah. what, <laughs> um, 97 as well? Yeah. Um, Six Sense was what? 99. 99 okay, so yeah. that came out like two years before uh, Frailty. Frailty was 2001. Okay, that. <laughs> so so it was like after M Night's first, but before, I think Unbreakable might have come out the same year. So um, so but yeah, again, like he had hit with one, but it wasn't like everything he's gonna fucking do is gonna have a twist. Right. I I can share with you. So I was in college at the time, and I tried, to, you know, downloading the movie. Uh, I was kind of new to the whole. I don't even know if it was Kazaa at the time. It was one of the many things at the time that you could do. So I gave it a shot. And the copy I had was, it's a dark movie as it is. Yeah. Now imagine that dark movie with horrible pixelation. That's and what I end up with. I was just like, you know what? I'm done downloading movies. I'm just going to fucking rent them. And yeah, that was my lesson learned is from Frailty taught me that. <laughs> Well, there you go. There's my 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 nine deuce list. I really liked a good chunk of that. Um, all right. So I broke mine down more by um, streaming service. Although I didn't do every single streaming service because 
uh, time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, that, that's just the way to go about it. Um, I'm going to hit up the major ones, and I think after I do the major ones, I'd like to hit a break, and then I'd really like to discuss 2B TV because my mind was blown today by that. Okay. So, um, so I'll tell you the worst one out of the major ones. And I, out of the major ones, I'm going to say Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon Prime are my three major ones. Yeah, I would agree. Okay. So Netflix let me down big time to the point where I just learned today that they don't even have the invitation anymore. I thought that was like a Netflix original, but apparently it wasn't. I actually um, enjoyed that. I, yeah. I, I mean, I'm glad I purchased it on Vudu way back when, but I just – I always thought it was going to be on Netflix, and I was wrong. So, all right, Netflix – I I, there, I do have a list of movies that I want to see, um, so I'm not going to get into that right now, but hopefully that'll be something I hit up next month. Um, uh, movies that I will recommend, um, some I'm just going to be quick with, uh, there's a really cheesy Truth or Dare movie. There's actually two of them that came out the same year. Yeah, one was good, one was not. Right. Well, one was find okay, the, one was not. Find the one that doesn't take itself too seriously, and you could have an okay time. Uh, it also has uh, Heather Lankenkamp from um, Nightmare on Elm Street. Nancy, mm-hmm. she's in it. Um, I, I it, it's it's just silly shit, but you can kind of have a good time. I've shown it to a few people that like were into it initially, and like the whole time, it's a good group movie because you can sit there and make fun of the characters and be like, they're just being jackass, whatever. You can have fun with it. So, uh. I had The Ritual, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, Gerald's Game, which I think we've discussed on this podcast in the past. Yeah. Um, which, how we might discuss next month. So, um, but it's a Stephen King book turned film. And uh, I don't know. I, I mean, it was semi-faithful. Like, the, the ma- major points were made in the, f- in the film, right? Yes. Okay. Uh I don't know. I I mean, to this day, like the escape from the handcuffs is still fucking brutal to watch. It is. Uh, you know what's funny? To just piggyback off your little story, I borrowed that book from a friend to read it because I I had never read it, and then I forgot to give it back to him for like four and a half years. <laughs> All right. I was cleaning up my bookshelf when I was dusting it, and I was like, oh, oh, there's Mike's book. I think it's Mike's. Let me check. I brought it into where I was. He's like, yep. Yes, that's my book. I was like, oops, my bad. <laughs> Thank, thanks, man. Thank you. Nice. Yep. I mean, that was my, that was my story. All right. Um, moving on, an, a really kind of wacky little movie from India is called Pizza, which, of course, a fat fuck like me is going to be mealy enthralled by a movie called Pizza. And it doesn't grab you by the balls initially, but by the end... I feel that you can find some substance to it. It's really strange, though. Uh, it's not for everybody. It, it, I can't wholeheartedly recommend it, but if you're looking for something different that you may not have seen before, I you could spend a lot worse time than you would on pizza. And maybe eat pizza while watching pizza. Is it Just one of those idea. movies where you're not going to regret eating while you watch it? Uh, I'm going to say no. Skeptically? No? Nah. You'll be fine. Everybody will be fine. Okay. Okay. I think. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't remember much about this next film, but I remember liking it, and it was recommended to me years ago when I was looking for recommendations back in the day for October, before I realized I can just close my, my, my eyes for five minutes and... Think of a hundred movies to watch. I don't need recommendations. So um, I am the pretty thing that lives in the house, which I believe was a Netflix original. And that's why it's still on there. Yeah. Um, pacing at times is a little bit of an issue, but uh, the I don't know the tension, the mood of it is, is all pretty good. Like you, once again, it's, it's not a great movie, but Netflix has a relatively poor selection. Just saying, mm-hmm. and this is one of the better of the bunch. I, I think I probably would give it like a six out of ten. Um, 
I know how much that hurts you in real life, too, to have to adjust your rating scale to do out of tens. I'm just dumbing it down for for everybody. Uh, I had Green Inferno. Uh, Who the fuck did that? Um, Was that a Bloomhouse? It was the same dude that did Hostel. Uh, Yeah, um, Eli Roth. There you go. Uh, This deals with cannibals. I, I mean... I, I'm pretty sure you can figure it out from the trailer, but if you can't, I just ruined it. I don't care. A bunch of dumb Americans go in a place where they shouldn't go, and they get what's coming to them. And I'm all about that, quite frankly. So, if if you enjoy that idea, give it a shot. Because, uh, like, you you know, when you get annoying characters, you kind of are happy when... They die. You, yeah. Yeah. Like... like Every movie that Carrot Top ever gets killed in, yeah, I'm, I'm all in. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I feel like. Oh wait, no, I'm skipping over one. Uh, in the Tall Grass, I don't remember how much of a horror it was. It was a Stephen King story, and it has Thomas Jane, who played the Punisher oh so well. Uh, God, it took place. I don't remember. I think I'm combining this with like 1912 or something, 1902 or something. Because I think Thomas Jane may have been in both of them. I don't know. I'm getting my shit confused. All I remember is that I liked the movie. It, it's not much horror, though. But, once again, I'm running... Are you sure low. Thomas Jane was in there? I think that was Patrick Wilson. Yep. And so, Th- Thomas Jane was in 1902? Or ni- yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the 19... Yeah. Yep, getting my uh, Stephen King Netflix movies twisted. My bad. Thank you for uh, straightening me out here. No problem. You know, I, I may not have seen it for. in the tall grass now that I'm talking about it. Having this realization as I'm <laughs> doing this podcast. <laughs> All right, fantastic. I'm going to move along while the embarrassment's fresh. Uh, the Forest, starring uh, with Natalie Dormer from yes. uh, Game yeah, of Thrones. I, I remember that one. Well, it I, wasn't I remember, yeah. bad. No, it wasn't. 1922 was the other one. 1922. I knew there was a nine and a deuce in it. That, that was the best I could do. Nine deuce! Um, the Forest really wasn't bad. It kind of got shit reviews, which, once again, goes to show, don't trust reviews unless, you know, like, if, if nobody really likes it, maybe, you know, you can avoid it. But this really wasn't that bad. It wasn't great, but I kind of liked... Um, you know, it felt very much more like a, a Japanese film. Yes. Japanese horror. And I I liked it for what it was. It wasn't... It won't blow your socks off, but if you're into the Japanese horror, then I think you would enjoy it, basically. I think part of it was that people weren't didn't know what they were getting. And they were... I think they were expecting, like, a straight-up grudge or ring kind of thing. I, yeah, I, I agree. I had no freaking clue what the hell I was in for, and, you know, it just, it was fine. It was it was better than expected. So, uh, I came across this next movie called Malevolent, and I thought, this doesn't sound too bad, and then I realized that I apparently wrote about it, like, back in 2018. Completely forgot about it. Um... Kind of mocks Ghost Hunter movies. Not as good as Grave Encounters, but it does an okay job. It, it, it's I enjoyed it. I, it for what it was. Uh, once again, if if you find Ghost Hunter type movies to be kind of stupid, mm-hmm. you may enjoy this. Like it, it, I don't know. I I like ghost movies. We, you know, we I, hell we've done podcasts on ghost stuff. Like ghost stuff when done right can be fun. And this was like. You know, it's funny. Hmm. James Cosmo's in it. <laughs> God bless James Cosmo. I haven't seen that one, but I, I really like Florence Pugh, too. So Yes. Um, yes. Um, I, I liked her, um, Ben Lloyd Hughes, and uh, Celia Imry, or Imry, I don't know how to pronounce her name. <laughs> Those were the three that stood out to me, um, apparently, when I wrote about it. So, uh, okay, that doesn't... All right, actually, that's it because the other two movies I have on my list are not like hidden gems; they're movies that people know. Like I had the gotcha. Strangers and the Haunting in Connecticut too, and those were both 
you know, relatively the mainstream. Theater. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, just for fun, I don't do this for all of them, but just for fun, just because I'm kind of pissed off with Netflix. I also made a not recommended list that I just want to name really quickly, which includes Girl on the Third Floor, Pet Cemetery 2, Splatter, Tales from the Hood 2, Hush, Crimson Peak, The Strangers Pray at Night, Hostel Part 3, Hellfest, Prom Night, the, the reboot, Sinister 2, and Unfriended. I disliked all of those movies. You, you didn't Friday. like uh, Pet Cemetery 2? With Clancy Brown? I love Clancy Brown. I love Edward Furlong, but god damn, that freaking movie sucks. This is the police. Come out with your hands up. <laughs> it's such a bad movie. It's so bad. I remember yeah. that, was one, that was one of the ones that my dad uh, rented when we would go spend the weekend with him after he and my mom got divorced. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, that, that's, yeah, exactly the type of movie that it, that is. What sucks is that a lot of people really liked Hush. It was not for me. Uh, the premise has kind of been... The only, only thing different about Hush than other movies was that the main uh, protagonist was deaf. So that's all they relied on for the whole thing. And while it was okay, like after a while, I was like, eh, it just didn't feel yeah reliable or believable. So... And I know a lot of people liked Crimson Peak, and I feel like that had more to do with the cast than the actual story. It looked beautiful. Crimson Peak was completely marketed as a different type of movie than what it actually was. Thank you. I agree. They marketed it as a straight horror movie, and it was almost more of like a Wuthering Heights kind of fucking... kind of shit. Correct. Yeah. Um, Sinister 2 was such a bad follow-up to Sinister. Uh, I didn't hate it, but... It wasn't as good. And the, the big thing, I think, that that killed it, I mean, what, besides the fact that they went with... Yeah, I like James Ransone, but he wasn't ready to carry a movie like, you know, Ethan Hawke was. Right, he just wasn't... And, they, his character wasn't strong enough yet. But um, having the kids talk... Yeah. That, that was, I think that was what fucking was the worst part about the thing. You know, like, everything else could have worked, but... Yeah. Right. Also, did you know that there's a third Tales from the Hood? I uh, did not. No, I did not know that. I can't. Like, I'm not paying big money for it because I didn't like the second one. So I'm very skeptical on a third one. Uh, so hopefully someday it does hit one of these streaming services. Uh, I could not find it streaming, though. Um, and Hellfest was actually a, a okay idea. It just carried out poorly, but had... Oh, uh, was it? It was either Amy Forsyth or Samara Weaving. I can't remember which one of those two. Mm-hmm. Uh, she, and they're both good actresses. That was probably the main reason to watch it. But anyway, that's it for Netflix. Not impressed, and I don't know. I'm getting kind of close to just canceling my Netflix. Once is Stranger Things coming out soon? Uh, maybe in November. I mean, if it's coming out soon, I'll keep it. If not, I think I'm just going to go back to like my whole ideology of bring it back once every three to four months, binge what I need to, and then, I, I don't know, just I don't watch it enough anymore. I got you. Yeah. All right. Moving on. I think I'd rather do Hulu. Uh, I have a lot of stuff that is probably mainstream, so I'm just going to go with the lesser stuff. Uh, Willy's Wonderland, which stars Nick Cage. I think I talked about it the last podcast, maybe? Yeah, I think we talked about it last one. Enjoyable experience. Really fun experience. Nick Cage has no dialogue. And <laughs> it, it's a horror movie in a Chuck E. Cheese. If that doesn't sell you, then the movie's not for you. Simple as that. Yep. Um, they had the Child's Play reboot, which was okay for what it's worth, but that seems more mainstream. Uh I don't know if Train to Busan counts as mainstream because I feel like every horror fan kind of knows of it, but if you don't know of it, it's a really well done uh, action zombie film. I'd say it's an action Train zombie, Train to right? Busan is one of my top three zombie movies of all time. It, it, yeah, it was, it's it's, it's that good. Yeah. yeah. Have, you, have you seen the sequel? No, I bought it and I've heard nothing but horrible things. Yeah, I, I, I mean... But then again, like... What gets me is like how many times some far tonight have we been like how often can you trust reviewers? 
And that's why I bought it. I, yeah. I, you know, I, I, I got it for a decent price, and I said, screw it, you know? Um, oh, God, I included the gallows. I think I included the gallows just to make fun of it, because all the advertising material made that movie sound like it was going to be cool as shit, and then it was just a found footage bullshit movie that was just absolutely terrible. So, yeah, don't watch it. Um, Hulu is one of the numerous places where you can find another Korean film called The Host, which I don't, it's horror adjacent, as we like to say, mm. but it's kind of like if you could, if Steven Spielberg did a Korean film, you would have The Host. Like old school creative Steven Spielberg. Yes. Um, That's a good one. Um, I mean, and like the fact that the dude who did that won the Oscar for what? Uh, Parasite? Parasite, yeah. Last year or the year before? Yeah. Actually, I, I went to buy Parasite and I could not log into my freaking iTunes account. So I don't have Parasite. Bumps me out. <laughs> have you seen it yet? Uh, it's on Hulu. I have, um, You know, it's on there and I haven't fucking watched it. All right. Well, yeah. my bad. Your bad. Everybody's, everybody's wrong in this case. Well, We're all wrong. Except the people who've watched it. Yeah, but, you know, yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, yo, know, I had a high mark for Cabin Fever Patient Zero, and I don't remember liking that movie, but I think I hated Cabin Fever 2 so much that I may have gave a little more leeway with Patient Zero, considering it was like the third or fourth of the franchise. Yeah. Uh, you could do a lot worse. But one thing I was looking up is, did you know that Cabin Fever rebooted after just 14 years? I, I did not, know. Like, all right, I, I, I'm saying, I'm asking to you and people listening, like, what do you think the minimum amount is before a reboot? I say it's got to be 20 years, like a full generation before you can f- consider a reboot. Uh, yeah, I think that's probably a, a good time frame. Anything earlier than that and you're basically just remaking it for the same people who um, you know watch the original right I mean that excludes something like you know Batman you can kind of bring back but it, that's always different uh, you know it's not always the same story so to speak but if you're going to reboot and tell the same story uh, a generation so um, anyways I saw Odd Thomas on there which you were a fan of right yes well, yeah, it was okay. It wasn't a a great movie, but I liked the the story, and I, sure. I liked uh, Anton Yelchin and uh, God, I'm fucking Willem Dafoe. Oh, yeah. of course. Yeah. Um, friend request is on there now. I hated the film Unfriended, but I really liked Friend Request, and reviewers kind of had the exact polar opposite thought of me. So, I'm not sure. I know a lot of people did like Unfriended, but it wasn't for me. So, maybe if you've seen Unfriended and you didn't think it was for you, give Friend Request a shot. It's, I don't know, it's not as creative with the stupid, everything's on a Skype cam or whatever bullshit, but it tells a better story as far as I'm concerned. Uh, plus, it has Alicia Debnam, Debnam, Debnam Carey, I think her name is. She's... Alicia in Fear of the Walking Dead. She's a decent actress. So. Okay. Um, I noticed Crawl is on Hulu. I haven't seen it. Have you? I have not. That's it's actually, when I was looking through this list, I added a whole bunch of stuff to my Hulu to watch, and that was one of the ones <laughs> I had. Fair enough. Um, I have Lights Out. We've already talked about it. Um, but a hidden gem I have up next is called Your Next, which includes a shower scene with our man, Larry Fezenden. In the very beginning. (laughs) Um, It's one of those movies that kind of tilts itself on its head halfway through, I felt. And uh, really changed the the story and the pacing and everything. It just really kind of took a turn and it saved the film, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, I'm not saying it's great, but for that type of movie, you, you can almost be lulled into a point of thinking... Do I really want to continue this? And all I can say is, yes, I think you do. Uh, I ha- <laughs> Just for laughs, I had Wolf Cop on there. <laughs> That's all. That's the reaction I needed. That's all I needed. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
The House That Jack Built, I've heard is good. I haven't watched it. I just put it on their desk. If you've ever seen it. I, I haven't. Um, yeah, I've heard a, a lot of mixed things. You know, like, some people say it's good. Some people say it's trash. It's basically from... Like, I've, I've watched a couple of video essays on it. It basically sounds like the most Lars von Trier of Lars von Trier movies. Well, there you go. If you're a fan of, of Lars... Like, then... I, I guess he actually breaks the fourth... Has Jack break the fourth wall in a couple points to actually talk about, like, Lars von Trier movies. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I don't... I'm not saying that breaks it for me in any way. I guess I'm kind of curious how... How he goes about it, because, I mean, if you think about, like, how often Spike Lee kind of does something, you know, but it works sometimes in some of his movies, and sometimes it doesn't. Um, Now, a movie that I have seen that is incredibly underrated and has Larry Fessenden as the radio host is Southbound, which is an anthology movie with four or five different stories that are all fucking batshit crazy. Yep. And it's really... I don't know. It's one of the better modern anthologies. It, it was films. good. It was really good. I was really glad you uh, had us watch that one that that month. Like, like, I can't remember every story, but I still remember to this day, like, the guy hitting the girl, bringing her to the hospital and performing surgery. Dude, yeah, that one's fucked up. The one before that with the... Uh, where the, the girls' cars break down and they end up fucking... Oh. Yeah. The family, yeah. yeah. God, yeah. Every th- I don't know. Southbound is such a. It's really a treat. It's probably one of my higher recommended ones on the Hulu. The the uh, the angels or whatever you want to call them. Mm, yeah. Oh, in the very beginning yeah. and the end. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. What? Is, I, and I. Although I did mention Larry, he really probably has like like thirty seconds of dialogue, but just had to mention him. Uh. I I have seen the movie The Wailing on a lot of these things. Have you ever seen that? I you know what I remember it was like the number one horror movie on so many people's list for 2016, and I watched it. And maybe it's just something that's lost in translation, but I didn't like it. D- did you feel like it didn't do much for you? Like it, you know, I have a feeling that maybe if. It was maybe if we grew up in that culture, um, yeah. You know, so Korea, like, some of the shit would have been scary. But it, like, I don't know, imagine like trying to have a Buddhist or a Hindu person watch something where like the horror is based in Christianity. Sure. Kind kind of idea, you know, like, like an exorcism movie, where, you know, where a lot of it is based upon you know the actual religious par- portion instead of you know more into the demon or ghost or what it, it just like it fell flat it was a beautifully shot movie and the I can't complain about like the acting in it but the, the plot the storyline didn't do it for me people are like oh my god it's so scary I'm like no it, it's it's not scary it, it really isn't and normally I'm not going to sit here and just echo Chris's sentiments but I can't say it any better I really can't like, yeah, like I, I feel similar when I got to the end I was like I wonder if people were like freaked out by like cause like the exorcism scene in that was definitely not anything like you know like a typical one you would see in like a Catholic movie right um, yeah I- yeah like they're I f- I don't remember what religion it was, but it was it was very very different. It, it was. It, I don't know. I mean, it's really highly rated, and you can find it lots of places if it's something that you're interested in. People, it got a seven point five on IMDb, so maybe you'll find more satisfaction from it than Chris and I did. Uh, just I don't know. I, I'm I'm glad that I'm not alone in in my feelings on that one. Um, so. I saw Let the Right One In was on Hulu, and I don't know which version it is. I just know it's 2008. Um, I remember liking... I think I've seen both versions. I, I, yeah. I think it's a really good movie. Uh, it's popular within horror circles, but I think outside of horror circles, it's still kind of a hidden gem. Yeah, so. it's um, both of them, like you said. I like It's another one of the few where I don't think... Like, the original's better. But I don't think the American version, like, 
detracted at all. Yeah, it wasn't better by that much that you're like, it's uh, like Funny Games. Funny Games is another good mm-hmm. example. They're both pretty much good. Yeah. So, um, I had 30 Days of Night just because I know you like it. I mean, if you don't yeah. like it, you don't have to put it on the list. But yeah, I liked it. Yeah. Um, 47 Meters Down, terribly stupid movie. But with the right group of people, you can have a lot of laughs with it. So that's more of a group sitting movie. Uh, Black Swan. Uh, I love Black Swan. It's... It, can you even talk about the plot, though? It's kind of a, a difficult thing. Uh because there's not a lot of interesting things to say necessarily about the plot, but then to see like the transformation over time with it, uh, the performances by uh, Portman, Kunis, uh, other people, uh, Vincent Cassell. <laughs> <laughs> there's somebody else, uh, the, the older lady in it. I can't... I don't know. I'm drawing blanks right at the moment. Yeah, um, but. Same here. Wasn't it um, uh, Nellie Portman's mom? Yeah. Um, God damn it. Darren Aronofsky. Ar- Was it Barbara Hersey? It's been a while since. Yes. I, yeah. I think so. Um, yes. I, yeah. Like Aronofsky, I haven't really seen much of his stuff. Like, I don't know. Has he dropped off or is he not doing. He did like, Mother. Popular? A couple I years ago. I don't talk about that. But he hasn't done. <laughs> I don't think he's done anything since then. But um, I, <laughs> I didn't like Mother. Yeah, I, again, that was another one that was completely marketed like opposite of what it actually fucking was. For a movie that had a lot of people that I liked, including Ed Harris, I just mm, it was not what I wanted it to be. But whatever, not every movie can be for me. I'm yeah. not gonna be a selfish fuck. I gotcha. Um, moving on, I saw. Oh, no, that don't count. Uh, Carnage Park is on there, and that sounded kind of interesting. Uh, I think it could be okay for some people. Uh, I, I would I would say to look it up, uh, look up the description, and see if it sounds like something for you. Because uh, it's exactly what it, you know, it is exactly as the description is, so to say. <laughs> and Larry's in it, Al- <laughs> as is Alan Ruck. Who I like Alan Ruck. He doesn't have a huge role in it, but I like him. Yeah. He was uh, he was in Speed, right? He was. He was also yeah. in uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh, there you go. So, throwing out some good names here. Uh, let's see. Oddly enough, Hulu has Friday the 13th Part 3 and 4, and that's it. Thought that was strange. I always find it interesting when like I go to... I'm like, oh, let me... You know what? I haven't watched the Transformers movies for a while, and I go and look, and they have like Transformers three, and like none of the other ones. I'm like, <laughs> what? What the fuck? I'll tell you a quick thing. So I bought Scary Movie one, two, three, and five a few years ago on Vudu, and I was like, why isn't part four? Like, what? It wasn't even available to buy. And just recently, it was part of like a three for nine dollar sale, and I was like so happy to swoop it up because it just felt stupid to have. One, two, three, and five. Yeah. Just, yeah. Um, There's another movie called Hellions on Hulu. Avoid. Avoid people. Just don't, don't even read it. Don't, don't read the description and say, maybe it could be good, Ken's an idiot. Just don't. Okay? All right. And and going along with that, House of the Dead is well documented as a terrible fucking movie. Oh, House of the Dead is bad. (laughs) Yeah. Bad. Uh, what the fuck's the name of the dude that made it? Uh, you bull. You bull. There you go. Yeah. So, just just avoid it, people. Even if you love the video game, which you know, I still every once in a while, like maybe once a year, I'll, I'll put it in my Wii and uh, have a good time. The Wii was a great platform for a game like that. I, yeah, I could agree with that. Um, they have one. I spend your grave reboot one, two, and three, and none of them are as. None of them hold up to the original. I don't want to say are as good because I don't like using the term good when discussing I Spend in Your Grave. But if you enjoyed the original I Spend in Your Grave, none of them are worth your time. Just avoid. Um, Jacob's Ladder's on there. That's a worth a watch. 
as you and I have yeah, that was discussed. A, that was a long discussion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it was a, just a really good movie, so recommended. Um, My Bloody Valentine, the original, is on there, but not the remake. Uh, did you like the original or no? I never saw the original. I saw it a few years ago, and I walked away thinking this is pretty much every like early to mid '80s slasher. It, it, that's all. There was nothing. I don't know. A lot of people seem to have a lot of love for it, kind of like how Prom Night got a lot of love, mm-hmm. and I'm not sure it did uh, anything I, special. I think two of the thing reasons for both of those movies was weren't both of those Canadian versus um being made in uh, Hollywood. That could very well be. I, I think I, they were. I remember watching a video uh, maybe a month or two ago. It was it was comparing the original My Bloody Valentine to the remake. And then the remake is actually not a remake. It's kind of a sequel. Oh. Well, there I go. Okay. Without actually going out and saying that it's a sequel. I just remember the remake of Prom Night was... Had had its moments, and then as it progressed, it got worse and worse and worse. Yeah. To the point where you're like, oh, I wasted my life here. So, yeah. Um, For old school fans, the original The Omen is on Hulu, which, once again, is not a hidden gem. But, I mean, for a movie made in the 70s, if we're talking to an audience made up of 20 and 30-year-olds, it might not be something that they've seen or had interest in seeing. So I just kind of wanted to throw it out there, mm-hmm. I guess. Um, the Possession was not a bad movie, and it has Jeffrey Dean Morgan, a.k.a. Negan. Was that the one uh, with the Dybbuk? Oh, God. I the, um, the uh, like the fingers down the throat? That seems possible. I saw it in the theater, and I really liked it, and I've seen it one other time. Yeah, I don't yes, remember it. Yeah, it was. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I remember both times, because it wasn't like a well-reviewed movie. It wasn't hated, but it wasn't well-reviewed. But I, I if you like a, a good possession-type film, you won't... I don't think you'll dislike it. Um... Now, I'm not sure if I'm qualifying this next film properly. I found a film called The Resort, and I'm not sure if they misspelled it. There's a film called The Resort where the S is not an S, it's a Z. And I'm thinking this is the same film. It looks to be the same, but I'm not 100% sure. If it is, it's a resort where you can hunt zombies. Yep, and yep. It, it, you know what? It's It's... it's if that sounds like the type of film that you want, then you won't be that pissed off. If it sounds stupid, and to just don't watch it. But, I don't know, I found it kind of fun. That's all. Um, and that's definitely not a movie most people have heard of. Uh, I also found Sorority Row. Uh, can't remember if it was the original or the remake. God damn it! I think the I think it's the, the remake with Carrie Fisher. Mm-hmm. Um, there was an '80s version, then there was the remake. Both follow similar things. Um, I I don't know if one's much better than the other. It's, it's not a bad plot though. Uh, definitely flew under the radar. The newer one, at the very least. Uh, it's sla- It's I don't want to say it's slasher. It kind of is though. I guess that's the best way you'd describe it. Uh, it's like uh, I Know What You Did Last Summer kind of mm-hmm. type film. So if you like that, that's good. Um, the original Stephen King's It that was horribly made on ABC but scared children my age and a little younger back in the day. Um, and I don't know. I still haven't watched It Part 2, so I can't even say what one's better. Have you, have you watched both of the new? Yeah. Do you have a do you have a strong opinion that one's better than the other, or is it kind of like I, I, they both did things? I else? like both. You know, like um, I have a fondness for the um, the nineteen was it nineties? Yeah, it was like early nineties. Yeah, I, think. I have a I have a fondness for that one. Um, it had a great cast. I mean, so the new one, but yeah. At the same time, I rewatched it within like two or three years ago, and it it like the um, 
it it's not necessarily doesn't hold up very well. Like the it, the special <laughs> effects are fucking dated. Well, yeah, I mean, because it, it wasn't made as a movie. It was like it was made it's for a, ABC. Yeah, it was a miniseries. Yeah, uh, yeah. It basically Tim Curry saves that movie's ass in yeah. hindsight. It, he really does. On on the other hand, um, the the special effects definitely hold up in the new one. Um, I, I overall I liked it. Like I, a lot of people shit on the the part two, and I'm like I don't understand it. Like. In my opinion, it's maybe a little bit weaker than the first part, but it's it's still good. It's like really good. Um, I s- but I it's, still it's missing a few things. Like it it they completely don't have. I believe in the Easter Bunny eat battery acid scum. You know, like they they cut that out because they didn't have it in part one either. So yeah, that's that's a Debbie Downer. I mean, I here's the thing. I know that this is going to be actually probably a topic we hit up next month mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, so. I, mean, I don't feel we need to go into it super far. Right. Um, another Stephen King movie, but this one wasn't good, was Sleepwalkers. <sighs> but I, I did actually go to the movie theater. I dragged my mom to see it, and she probably wasn't happy with me. <laughs> That's the best I can offer. It's not a good movie. Yeah. Um, and the final thing on Hulu... Uh, was unsane, which a lot of horror fans seem to like. I personally didn't like it that much, but it's. Wor- I think it's worth a watch. Like, you know how there's some movies that you don't like, but you can still say it's worth a watch to make your own opinion on. Because mm-hmm. yeah, that that's how I feel with that. Um, the crazy guy in it, I feel, was somebody semi well known. Actually. I don't know. Maybe both the main ones were. Uh, Joshua Leonard. He was in the original Blair Witch. I want to say. Okay. Yeah, Josh. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. It, I don't know. Juno Temple, Jay Farrow. It's not a bad cast. It. Amy Irving. It. It's the cast is not the problem. It's. It's the ridiculous ne- level after a while because. Like, it's just such an impractical thing. Like, I know they're trying to make it seem like it's practical that this could feasibly happen to create horror, Mm -hmm. but nobody's that dumb anymore to think, like, you could somehow just get checked in by saying that you still have a little bit of depression and you think about suicide every once in a while. That's not enough to get you checked into a mental hospital. Yeah. Like, that's just so blindingly stupid. And I wonder if people... I'm I'm angry at the movie for the fact that I wonder if there are people that saw this movie and thought that could possibly happen and prevented them from seeking help with depression. I'm really thinking deeply into this, but it kind of... I, it made me wonder, because people believe shit that happens in movies, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I could see it feasibly have prevented people that needed help from going and getting help, and that pisses me off. That's my thoughts on that. But, on the other hand, it got a 6.4 on IMDb, so people liked it. Uh, that's it for Hulu. I don't really want... You know what? Amazon Prime has changed so much. They used to have a lot of really like shitty movies made from like the past decade that were like handheld camera or you know they didn't do much lighting. And it, like Swamp Ape. Just think about it. There's a film called Swamp Ape, okay? And it was brilliant, but it was terrible. There was one, like, about Paul Bunyan. It, it was all terrible shit. You know? <laughs> like, they're trying to be a little bit more classy now with, with their horror selection. But, my God, navigating Amazon Prime is not... It's Easy. a journey, yeah. I feel. Um, so... With that being said, I, there's a lot of actual stuff that's well known, uh, so I don't want to go over the well known stuff. Uh, obviously, uh, I while I do figure, while I do think that Midsummer is semi well known, I'm just going to throw that out there as a movie that if you have not seen, please see it. It's good. It's really good. Um. They have uh, the ruins, which I thought kind of flew under the radar. I was—I've uh, never seen that, but I was reading a 
uh, synopsis. I want. Okay, so you've seen it, and you liked it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that answers that question. Yeah, uh, I had no issue with with the film. I mean, it's stupid at points, but you read the synopsis and you know that people are going to do dumb things, right? Like, hey, the locals are telling you you probably shouldn't go here. Well, we're we're Americans. We're going to go here anyways. Mark oh, up. bad things happen. I mean, really, that's the gist. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, Lake Mungo is on Prime, and the horror community seems to be fond of Lake Mungo. What did you? My, what did you think? Um, Lake Mungo is the one about the missing girl, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, it had me going for a bit, and then as it progressed, I was just like, "No, this is just getting irritating to me." It irritated me more than entertained me, I guess. I, I remember. Like seeing a headline on like one of the like the video reviews that somebody did about it, and they were like the scariest movie you never watched, and then I watched it, and I was like, "Where's the where's the fucking scary?" Like it Dude, wasn't it wasn't a bad movie. Of people, though. It wasn't there's a bad movie, people. but it was not a scary movie. Like there's so many people online that just claim how scary that movie is, and it's it's not. Like. Are the people claiming it's scary believe that it, like this is a documentary? Yeah. I, I don't get it. I, I Once again, another movie, 6.3 on IMDb. Not for me. But it's popular enough that made the list for people that may be interested. Yep. Um, I don't know if Hatchet falls under Hidden Gem, but... They have one, uh, Hatchet 1, 2, and 3. Give Hatchet 1 a shot. There's a lot of uh, people that you know in Hatchet. Um, it's just a fun slasher, and Kane Hodder plays the main uh, antagonist. But Robert England's in it. Um, one of the main dudes from Grandma's Boys in it. Uh, fucking Tony Todd's in it. <laughs> like, yeah, it's it's worth a watch. Um, a movie not to watch called The Sacrament. Uh, another Eli Roth uh, flop. Uh, it seemed like it was going to be cool. I liked the idea of reading the synopsis. I was kind of into it. And probably the first half, you could sit there and say, this ain't bad. I'm curious to see where this goes. And it goes downhill. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, decent uh, actors. There's a couple of people I liked in it. So it wasn't the performance, it was just the story. Um, another movie from... Oh wait, I don't know if Ari Aster actually did Lighthouse, but I know it was done by the same company. Um, so Lighthouse and Midsummer. I don't think The Witch or Hereditary is on Amazon Prime anymore, though. But if you haven't seen Lighthouse, uh, it's a treat. It, it just is. No, I haven't. I still haven't seen it. Uh, I mean... Willem Dafoe and uh, uh, well, Robert Pattinson. Jesus, I wanted to say it was like Jason Pattinson. I'm like, I know it's wrong. Uh, yeah, it's just them going batshit crazy. I, I was, I was happy with it. Um, <laughs> Jennifer's body is a guilty pleasure, and I thought it got unfair reviews. I thought it was far more entertaining than what it, people. It, yeah, it wasn't anywhere near as bad as um, people like to pretend it was. Correct. Um, another popular film, but way back in the day that newer audiences may not be familiar with, is The House on Haunted Hill, the Vincent Price version, the original version. Mm-hmm. Still has this great scare. Like, a movie that old can still scare young, you know, new audiences, in my opinion. Um, and it still holds up. It just holds up. It's a well told story. Uh, Next, I have a great film starring Vinnie Jones and I can't remember who else. Uh, Midnight Meat Train? Yeah. Uh, Bradley Cooper. There you go. Bradley Cooper. I, I love Vinnie Jones. I, I just love Vinnie Jones. And this, I don't know, I thought it was a pretty good movie. And uh, who was Bradley Cooper's girl in that? Do you remember? Leslie Bibb. There you go. I like her too. So. I feel like there's somebody else even midnight. I gotta look this up. I feel like there's like somebody else in this that has a smaller role that I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, 
I never really. Uh, Tony that, Tony Curran was in it. Um, for whatever reason, I want to say it's like, oh, Ted Raimi. Yeah. And, oh, oh yeah. He's, Rampage Jackson. There, that's what I'm thinking of. He was a former UFC fighter. Yeah. But oh, Brooke Shields, in it. Yep. Yeah, she played oh. the uh, the art gallery owner. Yeah. And either Peter Jacobson even looks familiar. I don't know. What he that was is. he was on House. I don't know if you ever there watched you that. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. It's just I don't know. It's it's nice to see Bradley Cooper in something that I don't expect to see Bradley Cooper in. It was one. Of, it was one of the first things he did, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I I knew him from this before I knew him for anything else. Actually, uh, what was this? Two thousand eight. So that makes sense. Uh, I don't know. Anybody? It's I don't know. Would you consider a slasher movie? I don't. Yeah, I think I think that's where it falls on. Okay. Um. Another oldie but goodie, in case you've never seen it, the original Wicker Man, not the Nick Cage one, but the Christopher Lee one. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, watch it. Um, one of the few movies that if I had to make a nine deuce, if I was actually going to do what I said I was going to do, because I'm a big fucking phony and a liar, I would have included this next film. The Taking of Deborah Logan is one of the most underrated modern horror films out there. Yeah. It's fantastic the acting's fantastic the tw- the i don't want to say twist i don't really even know if it's a twist but just like the culmination of everything is really well done and um the director he ended up he's done a few projects he did uh the film escape room which i thought was okay too adam robtai i think his name is mm-hmm. and i also may be hyping him up because he was nice enough to like one of my tweets about his reviewing his film so i don't know you know, flattery will give, will bring all kinds of happiness my way. Uh, but seriously, like, it, it's weird. It's one of Raylene's favorite horror films. She's not even, like, into horror films. She just watches them when I put them on. But it's, I don't know, I, everybody I've shown it to has walked away impressed. Um, and anybody that's cool. actually seen it, you know, has agreed, you know, it's cool. So, there you go. Uh, Slither. Anybody that's fans of James Gunn should check it out because it has Nathan Fillion, Michael Rooker, and the lady whose name I can't think of at the moment. Uh, yeah. Anyways, if you like James Gunn, check out Slither because nobody ever talks about Slither. Uh, Elizabeth anymore. Banks. There you go. Yeah. Uh, the Wailing, <laughs> Phantasm. If you've never seen Phantasm. Uh, the the host. Uh, Last Shift. Last Shift is an interesting movie that's not great, but it's about a lady. There's a new like precinct opening up, and she has to work overnight at the old one. Um, they're kind of like transferring files, but it's the last night that this precinct is going to be open before everybody just works out of the new one, the you know the newly constructed one. <laughs> And basically, she gets haunted by the ghost of uh, a prisoner, basically. And it's, I, I don't want to say it's great, but it's its fun. It, it, that sounds really familiar. Does it? But I don't know if I've seen it. Hmm. I would recommend it. Um, I think it's on, well, it's on Prime. It's on my Voodoo, I think. I, I'm pretty sure I bought it. Um. I don't think there's anybody truly that famous from it. Uh, there might be like some, like one or two people that you kind of know, but eh. um, excision made my my list. Uh, it's actually probably more of a coming of age, girly type movie, but there's enough like horror to it, and the cast is good enough. Uh, oh, was it Tracy Lords is in it as the mom? Um, I want to say Malcolm McDowell's in it too. Yeah, he's he's like either a teacher or the principal. He might be the principal. Ariel Winter from uh, Modern Family's in it. She's obviously much younger. Mm-hmm. Um, Roger Bart, who's like a familiar face. Jeremy Sumter, who was in Frailty. 
I believe, is also in it. And John Waters. So, pretty stacked cast. Um, I don't, I don't know if I want to say body horror. There's comedy. There's drama. There's some poor decisions. But it's like a really guilty pleasure film for me that, once again, if I just stuck to a top ten list or whatever, Excision would have made it on there because I don't think hardly anybody's seen it. Uh, so I'd throw that out there. And I am almost done. Uh, Wolf Creek 2, if you've never seen it, is kind of better than Wolf Creek 1. Uh, Monster Squad... I just want to give props to Monster <laughs> Squad. And I found out that there's a, a documentary on Tubi TV called Wolfman's Got Nards. No I shit. I didn't even know that that existed. Um, I didn't either. The remake of Night of the, of the Demons. Uh, I still prefer the original, but the remake's not bad. It has... Um, ah, shit. One of the girls from American Pie that was... She also did 13 Ghosts. Uh, um, shit. Yes. You know who I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, want... uh, Shannon something? Yeah, that sounds about right. I can't think of her name. But anyways, her. Um, 30 Days of Night again. Secret Window. I don't know if Secret Window counts as a hidden gem or not anymore. Like, is it old enough to be considered a hidden gem? I think I so. Like, I, I doubt if you talk to, like, 15 Johnny Depp fans... Like, name five Johnny Depp movies that more than like two would have that on their list. I think that's fair. I would Depp. I thought it was great, and it wasn't. I mean, it, Depp was good, but it was all about Totoro. Totoro owned that freaking movie. Yeah, he he was great. So, and I don't know. That'll probably come up again next month. Uh, it's another Stephen King. Um. The Fog original, The Omen original, I Know What You Did last summer, all three of them are up there. Both versions of Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Quarantine 2, but not Quarantine 1. I also did not come across any of the Wreck videos while I was looking. I was surprised about. Um, I saw Pet on there. That's a movie to avoid. Uh, Jack Frost about Killer Snowman is a movie to watch uh, if you want something really funny. Uh, Ava's Possessions. That was a movie that would have made my list. It's a newer take on a possession film. Uh, it has a, it has a good, good small cast. Uh, I just, I don't know, I, I, I like a different take on an old story, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and this... Did, did that I guess um, God damn it I'm, I'm just looking up so I can get the name of the, the guy William Sadler which you know we know from Tales from the Crypt we yeah. know him from Shawshank Redemption so on and so forth okay and The Loved Ones is another one that would have made my top 10 list it's an Australian film I do not consider it torture porn but some people may do that and they should be slapped. Uh, it's about a prom night basically kind of gone wrong. Uh, and there's definitely torture aspects, but it's not like a saw or even hostile. It's, but it's in the same vein, I guess. It's adjacent. We, we like this. We, we really just need to have a, a podcast about adjacency, apparently, because we use it a lot. Yeah. Um, the Lair of the White Worm, which I still haven't seen, but I've heard, I believe you've talked about it. Um, right? You liked it, or uh, I've never seen it. Maybe it's Joe. Yeah. Joe also gave me a list, but then I realized half the stuff on his list I couldn't stream, so <laughs> I didn't use it. Um, uh, Teeth is on there. That's a silly movie with a vagina with, with teeth. Yeah. Yep. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't really know what else to say about that. If that doesn't intrigue you, it's not for you. Uh, we are still here. Uh, zombie strippers with... I want to say... Pam? No. Maybe it's Pam. I don't know. No, no, no. It's it's like a porn star. Maybe Jenna? I don't know. I think 
I'll, I'll say Jenna Jameson. I know Robert England's in it. Tito Ortiz is in it. It's funnier than it should be. But it starts off really stupid. So you got to get past the first ten minutes. Gotcha. Uh, um, Repo the Genetic Opera, I've never seen, but everybody tells me to I watch f- it. I fucking love it. So you can speak highly of it. Like it, It's something I'll, I will like, right? Yeah, I think so. I love the, the fucking soundtrack's awesome, too. I listen to it in my car sometimes. No shit. All right. Um, stitches is about a clown that gets fucked up and has stitches. Uh, I, don't, I don't really know how else to go in depth on that one, and I shouldn't. Santa Jaws exists, and if you want a good laugh for like five to ten minutes, watch it and then turn it off. But the opening scene really is... I don't use the word epic often. It really is epic in the cheesiest, dumbest way possible. Santa Jaws. Uh, and April Fool's Day is on there. That That's a really good uh, 80s, 86 horror film. Highly recommend watching it. And Flowers in the Attic. That wraps up my Amazon. Which, did you... Were you ever into Flowers in the Attic, by any chance? I... Watch the first one. But yeah, the f- with Louise Fletcher is good, but then they remade it and wasn't. Yeah. It's terror. Ugh. Not good. All right. So, we're going to wrap this up. We're going to come back. And I have, like, this... I have a lengthy list, and obviously I don't want to go through all of it, but, like, I want to read off some of the shit that I found on Tubi TV, and... I just discovered so much shit on 2B TV that I just thought it'd be worth it for like a quick bonus segment. Plus, I need to get something to drink. Okay. So, we good wrapping this half up? Yep. Or, Sounds okay. good. Kent just did like an hour of fucking listing movies. <laughs> Listen, October's coming. People need to know what to watch, where to watch it, and how, quote-unquote, it's free if they're already paying for the service. All right. So on that note, <laughs> we'll be back in a minute to go over uh, Tubi TV. Yes. All right. See you soon, guys.